the future's trajectory is shaped by the past, with the only interruptions being the unpredictable quantum mechanics events. This sequence of events, starting from the Big Bang, raises questions about the existence of free will, which I find to be a somewhat uninteresting notion. Today's exploration delves into this concept, particularly in light of recent discussions linking free will to climate change, where my skepticism about free will has positioned me as an outlier. We begin our journey with physics, examining the universe composed of 25 fundamental particles, excluding dark matter. These particles are characterized by instability and rapid decay, with some exceptions that form the basis of our existence, such as electrons, up and down quarks, and the photons and gluons that bind them. Their stability is vital for life, as without it, our existence would be brief and overly radiant. Humans are essentially large clusters of these particles, whose behavior is outlined by the standard model of particle physics. This model is intricate and essential for complex phenomena like Large Hadron Collider, LHC collisions, but less so for simpler concepts like free will. Although equations can describe human behavior, solving them for the vast number of particles in a human is impractical. The deterministic nature of these equations, along with the random quantum jumps inherent in quantum physics, complicates the picture. Quantum mechanics uses wave functions to describe particles, introducing uncertainty in knowing certain values simultaneously. However, the evolution of the wave function is deterministic, and when coupled with gravity, it reinforces a deterministic view of the universe. Thus, the universe operates as a giant wave function, largely deterministic but interspersed with random quantum events. Despite its deterministic leanings, the universe remains unpredictable due to these quantum jumps. In discussing emergent properties, the text highlights that complex behaviors can arise from the interactions of particles, behaviors not present at the individual particle level. For example, the electrical conductivity of metals is an emergent property that cannot be attributed to a single electron. These emergent properties challenge conventional logic, but are undeniable at the macroscopic level. The concept of decoupling of scales is introduced, illustrating how minute details at smaller scales become less relevant at larger scales. This principle allows for the existence of various scientific disciplines, each focusing on emergent properties relevant to their scope. Nonetheless, the emergence of these properties doesn't override the fundamental laws of physics, which continue to govern the interactions at all levels. Philosophers have long been fascinated by the phenomenon where complex systems exhibit behaviors that don't seem to derive directly from their individual parts. This concept, known as strong emergence, remains an intriguing yet unproven idea in the realm of tangible reality. In the world of mathematics, however, models exist that hint at such possibilities. Dealing with an infinite number of elements or limitless characteristics introduces a complexity in predicting outcomes for the whole system akin to solving Herculean puzzles. These theoretical models, often drawing analogies to the halting problem or related computational challenges, remain largely theoretical, as true infinity is not a characteristic of the physical world. When we explore emergent properties, we encounter a mix of deterministic and random factors. This mixture raises questions about the nature of free will. Free will, traditionally defined as the ability to have made different choices, becomes a more complex concept in the context of quantum mechanics. Consider a photon passing through a beam splitter, randomly choosing one of two paths. Does this randomness suggest free will? Many would argue this interpretation stretches beyond the conventional definition, despite some physicists' contrary views. This debate is central to the free will theorem by John Conway and Simon Cochin, 2006, which suggests a correlation between human free will and the behavior of elementary particles. Yet, equating particle behavior with free will as we understand it is a significant logical jump. In redefining free will, contemporary philosophy views it as an internal process, largely independent of external factors. Philosophers like Daniel Dennett and Jenin Ismail offer refined perspectives on this. Dennett sees free will as our ability to predict future possibilities and alter them, similar to how an autonomous vehicle operates. Ismael, in her book How Physics Makes Us Free, argues that free will lies in our brain's relative autonomy from external influences. 
This perspective, known as compatibilism, posits that free will is compatible with both deterministic and indeterministic natural laws. It's a view with deep philosophical roots, endorsed by thinkers like David Hume and John Stuart Mill. In contrast, libertarianism also supports the notion of free will, but differs in its interpretation. Some libertarians find in quantum randomness a basis for free will, while others suggest a non-physical aspect, echoing Descartes and Kant. But if free will is non-physical, its impact on the physical world is debatable. I find myself outside these traditional categories. Described as a free will denier by writer John Horgan, I view it more as a question of perception than outright denial. I agree with libertarians that free will seems at odds with both determinism and indeterminism, yet I question the value of a concept that doesn't meaningfully interact with our physical existence. In our world, where determinism and indeterminism intermingle, I find myself aligned with hard incompatibilism, a belief that free will does not exist. This stance bypasses the complexity of defining free will, positing instead that it contradicts the established laws of nature. Though not entirely opposed to compatibilism, which adapts the concept of free will to fit these laws. I see certain interpretations, such as photons having free will, as somewhat exaggerated. It's worth mentioning that neurologists view free will through a different lens, concentrating on whether decisions are made consciously or subconsciously, which diverges from the points I am discussing. In my experience as a physicist, I've encountered intense reactions to the idea that free will doesn't exist, including existential crises and queries about the meaning of life. My perspective is that the absence of free will should not fundamentally alter our approach to living. The conflict arises when our perceived understanding of brain function doesn't align with scientific findings. Traditional views of free will involve using neural circuits to evaluate choices and then supposedly employing free will to decide. The real challenge is to understand that what we term as free will is actually part of our brain's algorithmic operation. A Wittgenstein analogy is helpful here. We cannot anticipate the outcome of a brain's computation until it's complete creating the illusion of a free decision. In reality, this decision is a consequence of deterministic brain functions, occasionally peppered with random elements. Accepting this doesn't invalidate our capacity to make decisions. Choosing to watch this video, for instance, was a deliberate action, not determined by the Big Bang. The evolution of the universe, including the development of life on Earth, was influenced by quantum fluctuations and random occurrences post Big Bang. It's important to understand how our brains and social structures function to make well-informed decisions. The common notion of free will can misrepresent reality, leading to a mistaken belief in our control over our thoughts. Our brains process incoming information involuntarily, which is why dealing with trauma and misinformation is so difficult. The deterministic, yet randomly influenced nature of physics stems from its reliance on differential equations. Grasping this concept can enhance our ability to make decisions and comprehend the world around us. In today's exploration of free will, determinism, and indeterminism, we've ventured through physics, philosophy, and neuroscience to uncover how these forces shape our universe and our understanding of decision-making. It's been a thought-provoking journey, showing how our choices might intertwine with predetermined rules and random events. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, share it, and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for more content. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment below with your take on free will. Thank you for joining us, and until next time, stay curious. Time, stay curious.